I needed a pottery wheel this Christmas, uh, so rather than buy one, I I put one together with uh, some scrap lumber and uh, a few parts uh, that I found in the shop that had been junked. Uh, the uh, turntable on it is a uh, half inch thick, uh, well actually three quarter inch thick plastic, and the bat is uh, about an inch and a half thick, and it's uh, plaster of Paris. It's pressed on there with two pins. Keyed with, keyed with two pins, keep it from uh, sliding, and uh, it works pretty good because plaster of Paris is porous and it uh, pulls the water from the clay and makes it stick better on there. The, uh, the speed right now is probably somewhere around 65 or 70. Uh, I'm turning it with a one-third horsepower fan motor I got out of a a uh, 42 inch uh, shop fan that was bad the, uh, the motor is uh, rated at 1075 rpm the high speed and I imagine the low speed is probably 850 um, I'm controlling the, uh, the engagement of the clutch with uh, my my leg I just move my knee in and, and it, gradually uh, engages the clutch. Uh, it's got a flywheel on it so when you let go it still spins so you can kind of control speed by bumping it just like a kick wheel except it's motorized. It's a whole lot easier than a kick wheel. To show you how all this works, uh, go underneath. This is just some scrap rubber I'll use for the tabletop. The, uh, it's got a big thick piece of metal for a flywheel. The uh, pulley is a 12 inch uh, plywood pulley. You can make one real easy with a $30 jigsaw and, and uh, three sheets of uh, quarter inch plywood. I just cut the center one uh, a half inch uh, smaller in diameter. And you have yourself a pulley. And it's bolted to the steel flywheel. What's holding everything up and allowing it to turn is an old table saw arbor which has a lower and an upper bearing and that's uh, bolted to a, a piece of uh, angle iron, a large piece of angle iron which is uh, got a top piece welded to it and that's bolted to the, the tabletop. It works out real good. It's nice and sturdy and stable. The motor, there's a two-speed control right there. I don't have to change it too often so I just stuck it under there and I didn't, I didn't bring it on out. Uh, got a uh, one and a half inch pulley on the motor and that right behind the motor is a uh, four inch plastic pulley I made pressed and I drilled a hole in the center of it and pressed a bearing in there so there's a bearing on it and uh, that idler pulley keeps the belt nice and tight and uh, it doesn't quite touch the uh, motor pulley as you can see it's turning right now and it's not touching it uh, that's the key to how the clutch works. On the other side, I made the clutch out of a board and another idler pulley. This idler pulley is just two bearings stacked on top of each other with washers on top and bottom and a uh, small washer in between them. And that works pretty good. It turns freely. And this one can... I had originally thought I'd have to move it in and out with, uh, to adjust it as the belt got loose but I don't have to do that I can just uh, change the angle on this arm to increase tension on the belt as the belt wears out and the way that works as you bring this in you push this pulley into the belt and it pushes the belt into the uh, motor pulley and it starts spinning and then it has a flywheel effect, so you can let go and take advantage of that and let it slow down and kick it in again for fast speed. It's got a lot of torque, and uh, the motor doesn't have to be real heavy horsepower, even though it's turning all this, this flywheel here and this plaster up here. It, uh, it comes up to speed, to full speed, before you even engage it, so you don't have to worry about the motor 
having a difficulty starting. Everything works real good. I've tried it a few times. And because of the tension of the belt, you don't even need a spring on the uh, control arm. It just pops right back out when you release the pressure on it. <laughs> 